Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and today I'm going to be showing you how to change out a reversing valve. So basically if you want to see how I do it and how it gets done, I'm the man as always to do it for you. Let's get to the video. Alright guys, the first thing that we do when we get ready to replace a reversing valve is we need to recover. We, well, first of all, we need to turn off the power to the AC system. We don't want to get shocked. We don't want to get shocked or anything else. But the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to recover the Freon. Now you're going to ask, am I going to show how to recover Freon? Not in this video. Hey, I've got to promote my video somehow and I want you to watch more of them. So check out my video on how to properly recover Freon. But um, I'm going to go ahead and recover the Freon. We'll get back straight into replacing the version valve. Alright guys, now that I've recovered all the Freon out of the system, I want to show you what the therm uh, what the, not thermostat what the reversing valve actually is. You can see it right down in here is this little thing. It's got one pipe coming off, three pipes coming on at the bottom, and it's got a little coil that's uh, hooked to it. Basically, what the reversing valve does, you only find those on heat pumps, and you've got a little slide in it. So basically, uh, when you have a call for heat. It, it'll slide one way if you have a call for air conditioning that slide will adjust and uh, slide the other way now in the case of this AC system what happened is that reversing valve that slide inside of it um, uh, basically got stuck and would not go uh, it would either stay in heat um, stay in cooling um, and then sometimes I mean it would get stuck right in the middle and wouldn't do anything so that's basically what we're having to do today so basically to change this reversing valve out, we're going to have to cut these three pipes here. And there's a lot of people who say you have to change the coil to do this. I mean, not change the coil, but remove the coil to get to it. I'm going to try to see if there's a, another way we can get to it a little bit easier without having, without having to do the whole entire coil. So um, what I'm going to do is I've already taken the screws out of this uh, top or your fan so your fan is on top. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to remove the wires to that, take the fan off, and see if we can get um, better access to it without having to remove the coil. See if we can do a shortcut. All right, so let's let's go ahead and start taking our fan wires off. Take the fan wires off of the capacitor. And then basically we have another black wire that goes to our circuit board. I'm going to have to remove that, take these wires out. Uh, slip it through, it's got a little... Alright, let's remove this. It's got a little holding on all right we're going to sit this over to the side and as you can see now we got a little bit better access to our reversing valve so the first thing you need to do when you're doing a reversing valve is take off this this little you can see it the um the um, power to your coil that, that sends 24 volts to your coil that little coil is what's um, the, when it gets power it's like a, a little magnet and it makes the uh, slide switch either to cool or heat depending on your type of unit so that's the first thing that we're going to do and uh, now all we have to do is cut these here and what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to cut, so there's not much room here, I'm going to try to cut my copper up here, and then this one right, right here I may be able to sweat it out, but I think we got enough play. But the thing is, what the biggest, what, what you want to try to do is leave enough room so when you put your reversing valve back in you can put it back on the pipes that are there and so if we cut it here 
cut it here, cut it here, and at least get your reversing the valve out, then we can move these little pipes around and it'll make it easier to cut. And that way, hopefully, we don't have to remove this whole coil and that'll save us a whole lot of time. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those, those pipes, um, get them out of the way, and um, I'll bring you back next time. I'll bring you back when I'm finished. All right, guys, I'm going to show you the new uh, reversing valve that we've got. Um, this is the reversing valve here, just like I showed you on the old uh, reversing valve. You've got a, a uh, pipe that comes in on the top and three on the bottom. And here's your coil uh, that gets energized and basically makes your reversing valve switch back and forth. So what I'm going to do is I was, I was going to go ahead and take the reversing valve out. But I will try to show you a little bit of trick of mind on how to get that reversing valve out. A lot of times people say you have to sweat the reversing valve out. You can do that. Uh, it, it can get a little bit hard sometimes with as close as the, the, uh, the pipes are together. So if you look at this reversing valve, see how close these pipes are together? Sometimes it's really hard to sweat out. On this one, I'm going to show you a little bit of trick on how to get that reversing valve out a little bit easier. All right, we're down here at the reversing valve, and let me show you. I've already cut one piece of pipe here on the top. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm cutting right here at the, the top of the, the pipe. And see, this pipe is going to have to come in. Let me show you. To our reversing valve. And see, and a lot of times you got to sweat that piece of pipe out. A trick is if you can take and cut each one of these pipes and then basically take a, a, a set of uh, pipe cutters, cut it all flush. And because the thing is, once we remove all of this, this pipe will have a little bit of a play and we can kind of put that back together. Um, see, it's going to damage the old reversing valve, but it's an old valve. What do we care? So what I've got is just an old pair of uh, cutters. I don't care if it messes them up, um, but we will cut that out and get it done. All right, so see what we did. I took my set of cutters. And basically, we cut where the ther where the um, where the thermostat, where the uh, reversing valve uh, comes right down before it goes into my pipe. We have loose loose um, pipes now. I have enough room now to get to this pipe. I can use my pipe cutters to cut that. And basically, in less than a minute, we have a reverse valve out. And then we basically take our pipe cutters, these pipe cutters, and we cut right here. And then everything should be able to go straight into a reverse valve. And uh, we'll be halfway there. Hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Cutting this one off right below the wheel joint. See? You got a nice clean cut. And our reversing valve which should slip right into it. Now we're going to do this for each pipe. I'm going to get, so you can see, I can, I'm going to get this, I hope you can see, I'm going to get this last one loose from the, from the valve for you. And we'll just take the whole valve assembly out. And see, I can move my, my pipes around to get some room. See, I was at the, Supply house this morning picking this reversing valve out and uh, The guy who Sold me this I guess he was a technician and he said yeah I hated doing reversing valves because you got to remove the whole coil and everything well as you see We saved ourselves a lot of time because we didn't have to replace the condenser coil so knowing a little bit of secrets like this it makes it a little bit easier. So we're going to continue getting this out. 
It's almost there. I don't know if you can see. Right there. Everything's loose. Well, I guess we'll get a little straggler left here. Let me cut that off. See, there we go. The older version now is completely out. It's demolished, but what do we care? We've got a new one. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off, cut this one off, make them clean like the other two. Let's see if this reversing valve works. All right, guys, we'll look at here. A perfect lineup on our on our lines for a reversing valve, and we didn't even have to sweat them out. So basically, our next step is we've got to um, solder in uh, each one of our lines into our reversing valve. I'll try to get as much of this as I can because it's going to be kind of tough. Um, um, show you know getting in a position to show you guys but uh if not um i'll try to show you as much as i can but uh let's get the soldering this thing in all right guys one quick tip um i want to give you about uh when you replace a reverse valve is basically when you sweat these things in um it puts a lot of heat on this valve and the thing is if you overheat this valve and and warp the cylinder that switches back and forth it can make your new reversing valve um, stick just like your old one so a lot of times you want to take a, a cold uh, rag or something like that while you're soldering the reversing valve in wrap that reversing valve up to keep it cool so you don't overheat that valve so just a quick little tip don't burn your valve up that's not good Hey, and another quick tip I want to tell you guys is I always find it easier when I'm doing a reverse valve is to get that middle. See, you to look at this old old reverse valve. I don't know why I keep calling this a thermostat. But um, the reverse valve, you've got three connections on the bottom. And it's so hard to, to weld these things in. Um, one of the tricks I have found, the easiest way to do it is if you weld the middle one first because you have two pipes that are right side by side you can get your whole middle done and then I would work one side or the other um, and it would be a little bit easier to solder so maybe that will help you when you're replacing your re reversing valve alright guys I'm still doing this reversing valve this is a really tough repair I don't know if you can see this from sweat and I'm sitting in my truck for a little bit to cool off but uh, this is definitely not a repair for the novice. Um, but um, like I say, we're halfway done. We're getting the lines and everything welded in. And as soon as I do, I'll be back and I'll show it to you. All right, guys. After fighting and struggling and standing on my head, I have finally got this reversing valve in. Let me show you. I've got the top in. I got the bottom in. I'm going to tell you, some of these welds don't look the best in the world, but when you're standing on your head trying to weld, sometimes it is what it is. But um, but basically, the only thing we got left to do, well, we got a little bit left to do, but let me show you what the, what the reverse valve is. Basically, we've always got to hook up our coil. So here's our coil connection. And basically... That is it. Okay, guys, I hope I explained putting in a reverse valve at least a little bit for you so you can kind of get the basics of what you need to do. I hope you um, uh, learned something from it. One other pro tip before you uh, pull your vacuum or whatever, always purge your system with nitrogen. That way you can check your, um, your well joints with the nitrogen in it with soap bubbles. And you can always tell if you've got any leaks. I always hate when I pull a vacuum or whatever, you end up finding a leak, you have to go and figure out where it is. It just takes up too much time. I always purge my equipment for nitrogen. 
um, I check it with soap bubbles and this one is pretty tight so basically the only thing we got left on this call is we got to pull a vacuum we got to re, um, recharge the system with Freon and um, am I going to show you how to do that nope you're going to have to check out my videos on how to pull a vacuum and uh, basically uh, proper ways to charge up a unit hey I got to promote my videos somehow and keep you guys watching so that's it for today that's that for the that's it for the video um, please like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you on the next video